Hey everybody, Q RuPaul here from 2 Expats Mexico, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something called a Carta Poder. This is basically a letter of authorization that allows somebody to perform a specific task on your behalf. That could be getting your car registered, renewing your registration, getting utilities turned on or off, or doing any number of things you have to do at, say, a government office that you don't feel like doing yourself. Now all I ask in exchange for doing videos like this one is that you take the time to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little bell. That way you'll get a notification anytime I come out with something new. All right, let's get started. On the screen, I have a format for the Carta Poder. And again, the Carta Poder, as I mentioned in the introduction, is a letter of authorization that is giving some specific um, authority for someone to do a specific task for you. That's it. It's not as wide reaching as, say, a power of attorney. Um, I would fill one of these out if I want to say one of my neighbors is going down to renew his car registration and I don't feel like going down to get in line. I could fill out one of these, attach all of the necessary copies that I'm going to explain along with the documents I was going to turn in. And then I just kick back and watch television all day while my friend runs down there and takes care for me. That's what this letter is good for. When you first move to Mexico, you may not know how to get things done, like turn on utilities. That can be kind of complicated here. You can actually pay someone to go do that for you, and you would fill out one of these letters that's authorizing them to go ahead and get the utilities in your name, etc. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, there's certain information that has to be in a Carta Poder, but there's not a one-size-fits-all format. I like the format here. Uh, this is the one supplied by the Mexican government, uh, specifically the Secretary of Foreign Relations. Here's the first page. First page just contains a couple of federal um, articles that are pertinent to using a Carta Poder. The second page is an editable PDF. You'll find a link to this document in the description portion of this video on YouTube. All right, let's show you how to get this thing filled out and some of the requirements are. Now, you cannot do a, a Carta Poder in English. Um, you're going to have to do it in Spanish. It shouldn't come as a surprise to people because it's a Spanish-speaking country. If your Spanish isn't very good, you can ask a bilingual friend to help you, or you can try to muddle through using this video and also Google Translate. So let's take a look at using the form. It's not very difficult to fill out. So... We're going to come right up here to the first line and what it's going to have here, it says, write the place and date of issuance. It doesn't have to be anything complex, let's say, because I'm in the municipality of Tulum, I can keep it pretty simple and I could just write Tulum, Mexico. And I could just choose a date. I could write the date out or I can do a date format. El 3 de marzo de 2021. But if you're not up on your Spanish, that could be kind of difficult, so you can just write it out. You can do day, month, year. Now, this is important because, you know, in the United States, we write month, day, year. Down here, it's going to be day, month, year. Make sure you get that right. Our next line down is it's asking us to write the complete name of the person or persons or authorities before which this, um, say, authorization letter is going to be presented. So when we go down and uh, renew car registrations, we go to a place called Cefi Plan. So if I'm going to use that, I'm just going to put Cefi plan. If it's directed to a specific person, I want to fill that in. It doesn't have to be um, really complicated, as long as it's clear who the letter's directed to. So we come down here, and in this section, we're going to write exactly what the person is allowed to do on our behalf. Let's say at our example, obviously, we're talking about renewing a car registration. The car registration in this area is when we get our little card and we call it a tarjeta de circulación. So let's say that's all I want to give them to do. I don't have to go into a ton of detail. I don't have to write a novel or anything. Renovación, renovation de of tarjeta de circulación, if I can spell today. So this is just renewing my car registration. I'll put a few details here. Let's say it's my 1996 Ford Escort. If there's already a tag on it, you could put placa and then which is the tag number and fill in whatever the tag is or you can put a VIN number, whatever. You really don't have to put anything more than that. It's just clear what that task is. Now, this particular format does not have an expiration date. Some folks say it's a good idea to include an expiration date in a Carta Poder 
so it's not good forever. If somebody can't go and act on your behalf forever if they can find a copy of this thing. If you choose to include an expiration date, uh, you can put it somewhere here on the bottom. Just write something like carta poder, valida, hasta. This is saying the, the carta poder is valid until, and again, you can use the same kind of date format you would do on top. Make sure it's day, month, year. Now down here, we have otorgo here, which is the person granting the authority. It's asking for signature and name. So I could put my like Q Paul here and my signature above. It's not my legal name. Underneath, it's also asking you to write in your address or the address of the person. There's no fillable box for that on this particular PDF form. So you might have to hand write that in. So here to the right, we have acepto. And this is the person who's accepting this authority to go down and perform this task on your behalf. And again, with a signature, address, everything else. Well, in order to use this form, you're going to have to have two witnesses. And they're going to go down here, same thing. Their name and signatures and addresses are all be filled in here. Now, here's something that's a little unusual about Mexico. In order for this document to be accepted, you're going to have to attach copies of the identifications of all of these four people. Now, driver's licenses are not generally accepted as identification in Mexico. They're proof that you can are allowed to drive a car, but they don't see them as proof of that's really who you are. So in the case of a foreigner, a lot of times you're actually going to have to attach a copy of, say, your passport. They may take your, your residency card, but sometimes they'll say no. So passport is ideal. For Mexican citizens, the credencial para votar, the voter ID card, is the preferred document. But you're going to have to have all of these attached for each person. Now, coming from the U.S., you're like, geez, I, I don't like giving away my personal information just because I want to help, you know, witness a document signature. Yeah, that takes some getting used to, but that's really common here in Mexico. It's just the way it is. Another thing I want to talk about in Mexico is signatures. They are really very particular about signatures down here. If the signature on this document does not match almost perfectly the signature on the copy of the ID that you supplied, this paper may be denied. Well, there you have it. That's how you fill out a carta poder. Not very difficult to fill out. Probably the most difficult part of it is to get the signatures to match. Make sure you pay very close attention to that. Very useful, especially if you don't want to go down and stand in line on your own. I really hate standing in line. I'd rather fill one of these out, give all my stuff to either somebody I pay or even a neighbor who's making the run themselves, just so I can sit at home and do something more important like, I don't know, watch television or sip margaritas or something. Anything's better than just standing in a government office, right? All right. Well, until next time, hasta luego.